I was talking to the man in Texas that you had helped, uh, the man Chris, that you had helped with a tax thing. And right. uh, he, was, he was complaining about what you had given him to work with. And, and after about a month and a half, I said, look, just send me what, whatever Carl wrote for you, and let me take a look at it. Because he thought there should be so much more paperwork. He sent it to me, and I looked at it, and I looked at it, and I looked at it, and I thought, yeah, those two sentences, that's it. That's, uh, that's everything you need. And, and uh, he just he wouldn't believe me, and I talked to him uh, probably for four months. It, it probably took me four months to convince him to go to court again, because they had rescheduled it for a year later, well, 11 months later. Uh, it took me four months to convince him to go to court with what you had given him and to stand on it and not let it go, and he won. Wow. That's great. Chris Ewing. Chris Ewing. That's right. Mr. Ewing, like Dallas. Ewing's. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, if, if he won, he still owes me a shitload of money then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he, I mean, he, he just... He wanted to put paper in there so bad. He just had no faith. He, you know, he just and uh, it was it was like the day before trial. They uh, they pulled out. They they, they you know. Yep. They, they just it's the same exact thing I did for John Fall. John Fall and Mr. Ewing were the two most greatest tax code deciphers I've ever seen in my life. No doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. Those guys knew the code book better than whoever wrote the damn thing. And I am telling you. I told him, don't do it. You know, you know, don't don't do your crazy shit. Fox. Yeah, so that's why I guess Chris never called me up. <laughs> well, he never he never called me up either. He went to court uh, you know, like a week after I, I last talked to him, and well, he went to court. He uh, he he got notification the day before court, but that was about a week later, and uh, he happened to call me up to ask me a question about five or six months later. And I said, hey, you never called me to let me know what happened with the case. And he started go rambling on and on about how happy he was. And, um, I would have never found out if he hadn't called me up. Yeah, because like I said, he was, him and John Fall were identical. The same charges, the same everything. Almost like identical cut, copy, paste. Yeah. Like I said, the only difference between him and John Fall is John told Mark in Atlanta when I figure out what Carl's doing and how Carl's doing it, I've got a lot of rich clients from back in the day when I was doing Cayman Island offshore banking, and those people are going to pay me a fortune to get them out of their IRS tax problems. I said, that's what John Paul told you, Mark? He said, yes. I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm not here to teach people how to make a fortune, how to sell this information, to screw over the IRS or screw over the FBI or screw over anybody. If you owe something, pay it. Just like you did with your girlfriend. I wrote it on a napkin that she was going to pay it. Yeah. Well, she, like uh, she agreed to pay $10 a month. It doesn't matter if it's, that's all she'd afford. It, like my sister, when somebody said, oh, if Carl got his sister out of a credit card by doing his scheme, she paid $350 a month for my sister for 10 months. Of course it hurt her. She was making like 20, 30 grand a year as like a substitute school teacher. I didn't have my sister doing three dollars and fifty cents a month for the next ten thousand years. My sister paid three hundred fifty dollars a fucking month. Could have I told her three dollars and fifty cents for the next ten thousand months or whatever? Yes, of course I could have. A thousand months, yes. But that's not right. I knew it would put a little bit of a squeeze to her by doing three hundred fifty dollars. But she was making like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a month. And I knew it would hurt if she went for three fifty a month. I knew it would put a little pinch in her behind to make her think, Don't do this again. No more. No more credit cards, no more crap. You don't need this shit. Stop buying crap. So I'm sure my sister probably appreciated it because now she knows it's like, well, Carl, you know, she never said to me, are you shitting me, Carl? You could have got me for $3.50 a month or three months <laughs> for 100 years, a 1,000 years. Yes, I could have, Karen, but I had to do it for your own good. You know, it's the same thing, like I said, with Frank and uh, my daughter. There's no love lost between me and Frank. There's things between me and Frank in the past that, I'm not happy with, and uh, it would have been very easy to just go along with uh, social services and keep my daughter here, both daughters here, and just say, you're absolutely right, Frank did it, burn him and let him rot in hell. But I said I couldn't do that. Regardless of what me and Frank have against each other in our past, or he have against him, he has nothing against me, that um, I still helped him. 
because it was still the right thing to do. And I told Gus earlier, I would help Frank. Uh, I don't care if he's Adolf Hitler. Because he's my fellow man, and I'm here to help my fellow man. I'm not here to connive or convince or trick or deceive my fellow man. Well, Maybe I'll support supporting the system, Carl. You know, the system, if the system falls apart, you know, if, if you're not presumed innocent, then what, how good is the system? Right, and like I said, even like a Hitler, I try to avoid the guy. I try to avoid Hitler as much as I could, you know, but I, I wouldn't hurt him. I wouldn't just say, well, you're Hitler, and you need to you need to burn. I need to keep my kids here. I need to be happy. I need to go on my life. You know what? If you sit in jail for the rest of your life and rot, honestly, I don't give a fuck. At least I got my daughters, and you need to go fuck yourself. But I didn't do that to Frank. I said, nope, I'm still going to have to hold that he's presumed innocent until, you know, proven guilty. And uh, why? Because that's the way I want to be treated. And I have to have to respect that for him as well. You don't think I love my kids 10,000 times more than I could even think about Frank? Of course I do. And of course I knew I was going to lose my kids if I didn't support social services and the police department and that backed up Frank. Of course I knew I was going to lose my kids. That's stupid. I knew this was going to be fucking ridiculous what they were going to put me through and my family through. I still did it anyway. So I don't hear fucking people say, well, Carl, until it happens to you, you don't know what it's like. No, I do know what it's like. And I went through uh, seven years of dealing with social service bullshit in Alabama just to get a copy of the fucking case file, just to get a copy of the contract. Yeah, I went through all those years of that bullshit with those people because it's still the right thing to do is to fight, keep on fighting. People fucking put me down and said, are you shitting me, Carl? In that transcript, uh, you said to the judge, when the judge said to the state, what do you require for Mr. Lentz to do again by his children? They just said, well, we just need a piece of paper from somebody saying that he's fit to be a father. And he said, well, what, he won't go to your psychological evaluation? It's just like, no, we're not asking him to do a psychological evaluation. We just need Mr. Lentz to have somebody sign a piece of paper saying he's fit to be a father. And they said, well, who? Who? Anybody in particular? He's like, no, his brother could sign it. His mom could sign it. It doesn't matter. Carl could go out in the parking lot. He could sign it. We don't give a shit. As long as social services has it on file, saying as Carl's competent to be a father, we'll give him back his children. And the judge said to me, are you shitting me? Out of all, like, all this crap for all these years, and all you need to do is put a piece of paper in his court saying you're fit to be a father? You're kidding me. I said, sir, do you understand if you told me the blank he'd give me back my children. Do you understand I'd take that stapler off your bench and I'd staple my eyelids to my forehead and I'd never blink while I'm in this courtroom? Do you understand? He says, no, I don't follow you. I said, sir, I cannot subject myself or submit myself to your control or your authority. You're not my dad and you're not my God. You do not tell me anything to do. You do not make terms and conditions. I don't, I don't negotiate with terrorists. You're not going to try to convince me that I have any obligation or duty to perform for you or any member of this court. I said, I'm a man. I said, when, I'm, when, when I say that I'm man, you better believe it. And no other man's going to tell me what to do. It is never going to fucking happen. You are not going to order me around. He said, but I just can't believe it. That's all you need to do. Sir, I am telling you, it's not th that easy as you think it is. Because the first time you subject yourself to the authority of this state, they're going to jump through that hoop. And they're going to come and take my children away from me in two minutes when I roll out of this parking lot. And then I'm going to have to jump through 100 hoops. The first hoop's going to be easy. It's the next 1,000 hoops that are going to fucking be a killer. So they get all these parents to sign safety plans, and they get to go home with their children immediately. Yeah, they, they stay with the kids for a day or two, a week or two. Then they, the kids don't come home from school. And then the kids got the parents, you know, didn't live up to the terms and conditions of the safety plan. And then... The parents got to go through fucking 18 years of bullshit to get the kids back. I said, sir, I know the game. I'm not signing a fucking thing with this court. It will never fucking happen. I've never signed anything, and I never will. So the judge was like, okay, then let's proceed. That was the very beginning of that fucking uh, the trial, that hearing. That was the very first beginning, the first words. It was said, I said, I'm not subjecting or submitting myself to the jurisdiction of this court. It is not going to happen. It never will, and it's never going to happen. If you think it's going to happen, you're wasting your time. It was a lot of fun. It was a hell of a learning process. You know, because, like I said, 99% of what I know is from a man who couldn't read or write. You know, explain to me, they got no, you know, they got no right to tell you what to do. Who do they think they are? My dad was even like, I don't care what no Pope says. I don't care what the President of the United States says. I don't care who anybody tells you what to do. You ask him a simple question. Who puts food in your belly? Who puts a roof over your head? Who takes care of when you're sick? Daddy. That's who. 
Messi, the only one that you owe a duty and obligation to. You don't owe nothing to no man on planet Earth. Just your daddy. You just do what I tell you to do. Anybody else, you tell them to go suck an egg. You tell them to go pound salt. You tell them to go, go talk to my daddy. And I'll tell them what you can and cannot do. So thank God I always had that simple belief in my head. Who do you think you are, my daddy? <laughs> like I said to people on my shows, when I was like 18, 19 years old, cops came to my front of my house and said, what are you, my daddy? And I said, daddy, is that you? I haven't seen you, what, two, three years now? So I've been 16. Daddy, what, do you get fucking plastic surgery? Find the cops like, what? He said, you better be my fucking daddy. No man better roll up here in that kind of fucking manner and jump out of his car and jump in my face. You better be my damn daddy. Or we're going to have a problem. We're going to go around. It was a lot of fun. Because, like I said, my dad taught me the basic, simple concepts of, of law, of rule of law. And like I said, the, unco- the, the common law is not written. The common law is not written law. It's, it's a, that's the biggest thing i got to try to make people understand a million times. Is the common law, compared to like a statute law, or compared to man-written law, is, and you'll see in every single damn definition of common law, it says number one definition is unwritten. It's the unwritten law. My dog understands the common law. If he tries to steal from my plate, he knows he's doing wrong. Uh, you know, the law of gravity, everybody knows if they fall down, they're going to hit the ground. You can't have a king who's going to say the new law, the new statute, the new edict, the new act of the parliament or the congress or, or, or the legislative body here today is we're going to enact into law that if anybody within this kingdom falls today, they will not hit the ground. It is not going to be tolerated. It's going to be illegal for anybody to fall and hit the ground today. It's You can't hit the ground today. Or nobody's going to die in my kingdom anymore. I'm going to suspend the laws of nature, the law of the natural law. Nobody's going to die ever again. We're going to, we're going to create an act, and we're going to all uh, sign it, and we're all going to agree that this is the new law of the land. Nobody dies anymore. That's ridiculous. Real law, true law, can't be modified, altered, amended, vacated, or void. That's the common law. It's universally accepted throughout the galaxy. There are certain laws that cannot be broken or modified or changed. Like you can't take something from another man without giving him fair and just compensation. I don't care how you write it into law. I don't care how you write it on a piece of paper. You're not going to get anybody in the universe to agree with you that that's okay. It's an unnatural law. There's no way. You're going to justify taking from another man without fair and just compensation, stealing. Now, you could have a million people in the state say, well, we're going to take money from you in the form of property taxes. And you could be like, well, wait a second. I don't, I don't want you to take from me. I earned that. I created that. That's mine. Well, we wrote it to law, and we all got together, and we all agree that you're fucked, and we're going to take it away from you. Uh, that's not law. That's man-made law. Because God law you know, universal law, dog on dog, cat on dog, you know, everybody understands you cannot take from a dog, you cannot take from another dog. If a cat tries to steal from another cat, it's going to kill that other cat. You can't just take from anything on planet Earth and not expect a fight and not expect some resistance because even a cat understands you're trying to steal from it. Even a dog understands you're trying to steal from it. They're not stupid. So no matter how you try to convince another human being, oh, well, look, we're the grand poobahs and wizards, and look at the big crown on our head, and we enacted into law that we're going to take this from you and give it to this guy over here. Why? Well, because it's the law. No, it's not the law. It's a bullshit scam, you know, bullshit artist job. You're bullshitting me. You're trying to convince me, and you're never going to convince me. That all I need to do is sign a piece of paper saying I'm a fit to be a father, and you're going to give me back my children. That's not how it fucking works. I'm not negotiating with terrorists. You stole from me, you're going to give it back. And I'll fight to the death to prove my point. You will give it back. Well, you know, good luck. That's right, good luck. Now, we're going to see one day if the people agree with me, or if you convinced enough fucking people that you could sign, take a piece of paper and steal people's children and think you're going to get away with it. Well, you know, we all got together and took a consensus, and we all have a group meeting and discussion, and 51% of us won to vote this time. I want to take away your children. Really? And what are you going to take from me next? What's the next thing you're going to take from me? I'm going to turn it to China. You're going to take one of my kidneys? Because some Jewish guy in Brooklyn needs one? Is that what you're going to do? You know, when's it going to stop? So, like I said, it's just interesting how long. Um,
you know, people try to justify, you know, law, what they call law. And it's, it's, it's just a, a con job.